Welcome to uh, Chicago Corner. This is a special guest interview. Uh, the person I'm interviewing is David Sparks, and I met him in the early days, uh, way before we even started Hard Lens Media, before I didn't even know anything. And uh, this was when me and Daniel and a few others, we went on a road trip to Philadelphia. David Sparks uh, was, is, was a Bernie Sanders delegate. He was also running uh, for a state rep seat in Ohio. Uh, David, so good to see you again after all these years. Uh, so let's introduce you. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and just so we, our viewers and subscribers can get an idea of who you are and uh, what you're about? Yeah, well, let's go back, uh, geez, almost 30 years. Um, <laughs> I got involved uh, in what you're doing right now um, uh, at a newspaper. I became uh, uh, a student out of the University of Cincinnati, uh, got a job writing in a newspaper. And which exposed me to you know everything uh, inside of government, uh, outside, um, you know community news, what you know, just just all the kind of things that you, you run into doing weekly or daily journalism. Also, was a, a business journal journalist uh, for some time, and uh, got out of that for a while. Uh, worked uh, developing interactive for uh, different agencies, worked at, uh, as a contractor at Wright and Patterson Military Base uh, at the Supercomputer Center there, uh, have been a independent businessman. I've been a artist, a recording artist, uh, I've made independent uh, movies, uh, movie I should say, um, and have done you know comedy, uh, I'm a gardener, a beekeeper, I, I try to uh, have a widely varied life. And uh, what I've been doing since the election of 2016, which we'll get into, I've been uh, growing gourmet mushrooms, I've started a, a home business uh, doing that, uh, pursuing the American dream, you know, taking something from scratch and uh, turning it into a product that people want and uh, delight in even. And uh, so, yeah, that's like a nutshell version of 30 years of my life. Of course, there's plenty my, left out there. My friend, but, my friend, it's so good to actually hear that because, you know, like a lot of people see that kind of uh, person and they think like, OK, wow, that you, you've done all these things. So I kind of want to uh, focus on when we actually met. And this was uh, during the DNC uh nearing the end of the DNC primary. And I think we both have a lot of shared feelings emotionally about how that whole thing turned out and what was going on even before Philadelphia. Um, so I want to ask you just a, a couple of questions. Uh, number one, you chose to support Bernie Sanders. And then number two, you became a Bernie Sanders delegate. Um, why did you decide to support Sanders and his campaign? And what made you become a delegate? But also, you were setting up your own individual race in Ohio as a state representative. What yes. led to these three decisions? Um, number one, the, the first question is, why did I support Bernie Sanders? Was, uh, yeah, I was familiar. I've been a political geek uh, for years. You know, I, I, I go back to watching uh, James Traficant on C-SPAN. <laughs> um, and I knew who Bernie was. And I had seen him, you know, several times speak on different issues. And I knew the reputation that Bernie Sanders had. Um, and, you know, while he was a complete outsider with not a lot of support, um, I could see that he was a visionary um, in where he wanted to take this country in a much more humane, uh, ethical direction, if you will. Uh, and Bernie, I don't think, is certainly not perfect by any stance. Um, I have my criticisms of him and I'm not like... Uh, you know, Bernie, 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 anything Bernie does is right. No, but I think Bernie Sanders, um, his his election would turn, would push the Overton window that has been going to the right for decades now uh, in a different direction. Have. Yes. And, um, yeah, I supported the, uh, uh, Bernie on all, almost all of his uh, issue stances, you know. Um, when it really comes down to it, it, was, uh, it wasn't about like, oh, this – that this personality who's in, who's uh, captured my heart and my soul. No, it was like, Bernie is just like Bernie. And uh, it is about like, I want to do this, A, B, C, and D. You know, I don't want to like spew BS and like, oh, you know, I remember I, I saw such and such lady at the county fair and she told me that or whatever kind of like, you know, corn right. spun yarns that you're always hearing politicians uh, go on about. I just, Bernie, I thought he was an authentic 
or as authentic as you can possibly be in the system of Washington, D.C., um, uh, human being. And uh, I just really liked his policies. And so right. some people were, you know, I, I don't know, I saw something on Facebook uh, about a week after he, he announced uh, that, hey, there's a uh, we're going to have a big organizing meeting for Bernie Sanders and uh, went down to the Montgomery County Democratic Party where they held it. Um, and uh, there was like almost 70 people showed up. You know, the room was like packed. Um, I was like, wow, this is there is something going on here. And, uh, you know, more and more I got involved in the campaign doing everything from, you know, in person, uh, you know, voter outreach at music festivals, going right. door to door, phone, everything that uh is involved in a campaign. Right. I, I was involved in it. So, so then you became a Bernie Sanders delegate, and this is yes. kind of like where we uh, got introduced to you, as well as a few other uh, Bernie Sanders delegates, uh, such as uh, your wife, and then also Pooja Dada. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, huge shout out to those two. Uh, yeah, it was wonderful. wonderful. It was it was wonderful meeting those two. But you know, and and you guys were wonderful. You got you were very open, but. I I noticed this, and so did Daniel at the time too, that there was a lot of concern and. I guess, fear in the environment because of the open hostility and violence towards Bernie Sanders delegates and supporters and volunteers. Uh, We we were constantly hearing the same thing from people on and off the record, like, look, we're being uh, either physically assaulted or being barred from attending the DNC convention. And let's not forget when, uh, you know, you had a whole bunch of Bernie Sanders supporters and volunteers outside from the DNC tent and they had police snipers on them. And while the media did show that to some degree, they then switched it then to an, uh, uh, inside the convention where boys and men were playing. So I kind of want to ask you, because uh, c- in your article, you go into detail about what happened to you guys. So as a Bernie Sanders uh, delegate, uh, what did you guys deal with in regards to really trying to get your message out and supporting Sanders during the convention? I mean, we all know how it turned out, but... I know that you were kind of hesitant to speaking with us at the time because you were also running for office for the Ohio uh, state rep seat. Yeah, well, um, you know, one of the things that was you know uh, obvious from the get go was just open uh, social hostility, you know, from people who, you know, I've never met them from Adam and Eve in my life. Uh, you know, I've never been. You know, it, it, they kind of freaked me out because I've never been one who, you know. Uh, couldn't get along with some someone uh, who, whose politics I didn't agree with, on a, you know a personal human human being to human being level. So there was that. Um, I never uh, was not was never on the receiving end of any kind of violence uh, myself. Um, we were threatened with uh, being kicked out of the uh, DNC hall there for having uh, no TPP signs and no war signs. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually one of the Democratic Party's uh, representatives here in Ohio, Bill DeMora, was threatening the Ohio delegates uh, with being kicked out for having signs. I tried to bring my sign down into our area and we were sitting, you know, uh, to watch the proceedings, was told to uh, get, give me that sign. And I told him, you know, come take it from me. And uh, that solved the issue. Right. So, yeah, I mean, but I've, had, I've got a long history of dealing with bullies. But, but and that's, you know, that's how you deal with that. Um, so, yeah, there was like just uh, personal animosity, which was like kind of a ridiculous third grade uh, surreal in a way. Uh, and then the, um, you know, the, the literal physical attempts uh, to stifle the speech of uh, various delegates. Right. And as you running for Ohio State rep, I kind of want to get into this election because – uh, what happened during that race, and please go into any details if I'm missing any points, but to get down to it, your campaign was constantly being smeared with all sorts of tactics, and the DNC was uh, basically not support, at least the local Democratic uh, con- uh, organization in Ohio wasn't being fair to your campaign. So what was happening during that race, and uh, who, who exactly were you running against? Yeah, I was running against a guy named Jeff Rezebeck who uh, did not complete the term that uh, he was elected for, um, got appointed to a local judge position by Governor John Kasich, and uh, then was 
defeated uh, in his first attempt at election for juvenile judge in Montgomery County, which was great. Uh, I think a lot of po people saw what happened. So what happened, um, I was a first time candidate for office. It never ran for office before. It was, was inspired by Bernie's message for us to do it. Um, not wait for you know somebody to come around or some celebrity to arrive upon your doorstep. And so I did what uh, you know candidates all over the state did. I collected signatures to get on the ballot as a Democrat in 2016. And I got onto the ballot and uh, I was the endorsed Democrat uh, by the Montgomery County Democratic Party for, and the Ohio Democratic Party for state representative in District 43. Um, and, uh, oh, I guess it, uh, you know, everything was going pretty swimmingly. You know, I mean, I was just knocking on doors, knocking on doors. You were doing all those things that uh, were involved in a, in a campaign. And about three months uh, prior, um, and this is kind of topical since we're with the, uh, what's going on with Il Ilhan Omar right now. Um, I got noticed that the GOP was going to have a press conference uh, up in a gilded tower in downtown Dayton where uh, they were going to extol what a horrible human being I was to uh, the masses. And uh, what had happened, um, as I said earlier, I've done lots of music and comedy. Years earlier, I did a bit where I told the story of the first time I ever touched a girl's breast when I, when I was 14 years old and made it very clear. And it was a, a comedy bit where we did a song. I made it very clear that this is a story about when I was a 14-year-old boy. Well, what the GOP did was they sent out mailers to all the people in my district saying, David Sparks likes to sing lewd songs about young girls. Mm. Um, going on this thing and essentially um, not explicitly but uh, implicitly uh, tried to make me out to be uh, a creepy pedophile where uh, I, no one had ever said anything about that uh, in my life no you know I had posted that video um, it was actually a, a video about why we should fund Planned Parenthood um, because kids don't know what they're doing when they're 14 right. uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, I was getting completely smeared uh, for for this. Uh, a couple other, I forget. It, that was the big thing, you know. Um, it, it was just this attempt to turn me into this uh, almost like an antichrist uh, pervert, uh, which is quite ironic because I worked for almost a decade with Dayton Public Schools. I was a school bus driver. I was also uh, one of the presidents of the labor union there. Uh, shout out to uh, local 627 Ohio Association of Public School Employees. Uh, it will always be in my heart. Um, and, you know, I've got two daughters. No, no one ever, ever had <laughs> intimated or, you know, it just wasn't a thing. Right. And so, you so, know? so basically. So, and, and I felt they put me in danger, like, like we're, you know, we're saying with Ilhan Omar. I had like six, six cases uh, where I knocked on doors where people answered armed. Okay. You know, what if they believed this garbage um, that was going out? Um, and decided to take matters into their own hand. You know, what if they were mentally ill? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, uh, I, I, just safety precautions that the, the way our politics are going, they're putting our people who want to run for office in, in, in danger. Right. And I understand completely because it sounds very similar to what's happening to a lot of Democrats. There's a lot, a lot of popular progressive Democrats or independents and whatever people think about, like, for example, is Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard or Andrew Yang or even on local level where uh, something uh, something similar where uh, Andre Vasquez of the 40th Ward, he was a rap battler. Uh, he, he used to participate in a lot of rap battles. And the alderman in power, who's been in power for 40 plus years, O'Connor, was basically trying to smear him, similar to akin to, uh, you know, your song about what uh, about what you had to deal with uh, as a 14 year old. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a funny comedy bit. It sounds yeah, hilarious. it was goofy. But yeah, but at the I can end, give you a link to it after this is over. Oh, absolutely, know, but, viewers. But 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 at the end of the day, it just seems like that's just the way that the establishment works together because. 
Let's face it, the Republican and Democratic leadership at the federal level and at the state level, they're all friends with each other, and they have a system yes. uh, put in place to stop progressives from implementing change and stopping third parties from being on a debate stage. And you wrote an article basically why in good conscience you can no longer involve yourself in this political dilop- uh, you know, d- this double system that we have, this ridiculous neoliberal system that we have. So, um, okay, you're choosing not to get involved in it, but – what are you doing to really bring in, I guess, a conversation and bring in political reform? Because if the Democratic establishment is too hostile and the Republican establishment is too hostile, what do we do then uh, for individuals like yourself or people who are just like, I-, I don't care for either of these two parties, but I still want to implement change? So what can be done about well, that? Well, what I'm doing is I'm working with our local Democratic Socialists of America chapter, uh, Dayton, Miami Valley Democratic Socialists. Uh, and I'm helping other uh, candidates right now. Um, one of the reasons I didn't run in 2018 was just I'm a normal person. I don't have the ability to just sit around and call people all day long. Um, that's what you know only rich people can do. Excuse me. Oh, go ahead. Take. It's all good. Yeah. Um, and so uh, yeah, I had to have a regular. You know. I had to get on my, with my life. I can't, uh, you know, go into poverty for any of this. So, you know, I'm working uh, with candidates here locally. Uh, but, you know, when, 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 let me go back to the uh, the convention because <coughs> there's a uh, there's a phone call that I got, and I think it was uh, it was really kind of a shameful. Uh, episode in American politics, and it really kind of goes to the uh, what was actually going on. And if you go to that that, that medium article, you can hear it. Uh, they left a voicemail for me, saying, um, you know, if you don't stop saying negative things about the Democratic Party, um, you might lose your endorsement. I... This was from a an executive committee member at my local county uh, Democratic Party, right. and what I was saying was, you know, uh, well, you know, we've seen a lot of the San- Sanders people in the uh, have complained of rude treatment. That was n- nothing that was, you know, that uh, wasn't being reported. Um, there's a lot of people complaining about that, uh, just like on a personal you know, level. And people were asking me what I thought about the uh, WikiLeaks dumps. You know, that was the first thing, you know, because every morning you would go to the uh, um, the breakfast, you know, held by the state party, and there would be reporters there, you know, so they'd want to talk to the different people from the different camps. And my answer was, well, um, what would happen at the Ohio State-Michigan game if the fans in Columbus found out that all the refs got together and, and uh, figured out which team they were going to help. There would probably be a riot in Columbus. They riot over a lot less. And, uh, yeah, I got this call saying you, you better you know, watch your mouth. You know, I'm, it, was, it was infuriating to me because I'm a U.S. veteran. You know, I signed up to uh, fight for these people's freedom of speech, the freedom of speech that these people were trying to quelch. Um, and so... Uh, I took that in stride and just kept, you know, I was like, I'm not going to get into like a inner party squabble because it'll be all in the media. And, you know, that's all they were really interested in was conflict anyway. Um, so I'm just going to go forward and uh, keep on campaigning, you know, uh, respond to what I got to respond to and keep on doing it. And in the end, you know, with under, I don't know, it was little, I think we raised over just a little over $10,000. Uh, my my opponent's campaign raised over a quarter million dollars. He was also had innumerable innumerable. They spent the GOP in Ohio and the Ohio House GOP caucus uh, paid for all his mailers. I mean, they were it was unbelievable the money they were spending. I would turn on the television like the, the ads. You know, the David Sparks was the Antichrist ads were on like every thirty seconds. They were they were buying time in between World Series, you know, innings of the World Series. That's super super expensive time. Um, and uh, yeah, I just uh, pretty much got uh, kind of left out in the cold. Mostly, you know, the uh, the county Democratic Party was supportive, um, but 
you know, I, it was really just a completely, you know, grassroots campaign. It didn't take any kind of like corporate pay. It was all individual donors. As a matter of fact, I never even asked anyone for a dime. Right. It was ten thousand dollars that people sent from around the country. Um, I, my job was to uh, knock on doors and talk to voters, um, not sit around and like, oh, can I have some money, Mister uh, Pac-Man? Or you know. so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I was getting smeared horrendously, um, right. uh, dishonestly, in, in the worst way, you know. Um, and then uh, about a month before the campaign or before the election of 2016, um, I got a call from a local politician who's like, you're not going to believe this, Dave. He's like, Fred Strayhorn, who at the time was the head Democratic lawmaker in the state of Ohio, who's the, uh, the House leader um, from House from District 40 in Dayton. He's like, Fred Strayhorn is taking the entire, is out here with the entire Republican delegation, including Cliff Rosenberger, who uh, is under FBI investigation for uh, a scandal involving payday lenders. He's out here at this church and he's taking them uh, all around the city of Trotwood, which is in my district, and uh, in, into West Dayton a month before the campaign. Now, I'm, I don't know what he said. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think that he said, like, you know, don't vote for our guys. But optics are a big thing. Um, and it, it really didn't have any effect on the election itself. Uh, I won every single precinct in the city of Trotwood. But it said a lot about where it, it, it was. It was just a duopoly, like bonding together. Right. saying we can't let this kind of person with these sort of belief systems and it, it, I mean physically if you go to the piece on medium you can see a photograph of you know if and ask yourself if uh, Nancy Pelosi had went out uh, on a friendly campaign jaunt with Donald Trump uh, less than a month to elect before the election and so I'm really I'm really glad you gave me you know this opportunity because I right. want to tell as many people as possible you know if they're well, running for office these are the kinds of things you, you got to worry about uh, you know both sides of the aisle coming at you uh, as a progressive right. and uh, because ultimately they're friends at night well and the thing is that's something we've said numerous times on Harlan's media where the Republican and Democratic establishment are friends with each other because they take money from Wall Street, the big banks and corporations. But there's a couple of things that I just want to say because, number one, I didn't know you were a veteran. So as one veteran to another, thank you for your service. I did not know this about you. And then number two, uh, I, you, you may not remember this, but we were kind of in the room with you too when that voicemail uh, you, you kind yeah. of – Yeah, you, you, I played, you played it for it. you guys. Yeah, and you know it kind of was also my, I guess, education in regards to how corrupt – the Democratic Party is because at the end of the day, they would rather lose an election than have an open minded progressive actually step up and get elected into office because that's how much they are afraid because the same donors who donate to them also donate to the Republican establishment and they all want to collect all that ridiculous corporate money. I mean, it's it's a ridiculous sure. system and why we got to get rid of Citizens United. So in regards to this, I'm more than happy to speak to you. I am so personally glad that uh, to see you again after these years and let's keep an open communication, but I know that you're still doing a lot of projects and a lot of work and yes. at, at the end of the day, I'm just going to say this and you don't have to do this or not, but uh, you're needed in this fight, and I do hope that one day you do consider to run uh, again for office. Uh, I saw a lot of some of the smear tactics that were done against you in 2016. They were very unfair. They were unjust. And, uh, you know, we need more people like yourself and others all across this country to step up and get involved in this political system. So for our viewers, and yeah, go ahead. Just, well, just one thing. And what I, what I also want to, like, encourage everyone, to, there's a lot more to this story uh, um, involving, like, municipalities getting involved uh, in it. But what I did after I found out that uh, Representative Strayhorn went out and took the Republicans on the campaign trail was I looked up who was funding his campaign. Now, he runs unopposed uh, time after time after time. And so what? how he's gained his power is through, as a fundraiser for the party. N no one runs against him, so he raises all kinds of money and gives it uh, all back to the state party apparatus and then becomes like a hero. But when I started looking through his campaign finances, this guy is – the leader of a uh, representative from one of the poorest minority districts in the United States, 
and he's taking thousands of dollars from predatory payday lenders. It sounds shockingly uh, similar to everything that's happening all across this country, and it's it's something that requires investigation, but we're not going to get it from corporate media. Independent yeah. media has to step up, and there has to be progressive individuals like yourself to run for office and actually bring in change, and it's an, it's an uphill fight. But I'm happy to actually speak to you again, my friend. And so, oh man, thank you very much for for having me. I'm glad to no uh, you know, and, and, and to, tell and so, some of this story. Right, it's it's really shocking. Right, and, you know, and we need to remember our history if we're going to go forward. All right, and and so uh, one final note uh, for our viewers and subscribers: if they want to follow you on social media, uh, where can they uh, find you and learn more about you and, and whatever whatever projects that you are working on? If you want to get a hold of me. Just go to my business as well. You know, I'm not meaning this to be a, uh, a plug for my business because most of you can't order the stuff from me anyway because it's like fresh products delivered to restaurants. Just go to guidedbymushrooms.com. That's the name of my business here in Dayton. And there's a contact form if you want to get a hold of me because I've really kind of laid off of uh, you know social media about me, uh, if you will. Uh, and... Um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to help other people. I, I've never was in it to be like Mr. Celebrity, look at me guy. You know, right. um, that's really if you if people are in the political game for that reason, then you should you should be aware of them. If anyone really enjoys all the adulation, you should be aware be aware of them deeply. Absolutely. So. That's and that's a great note to end on, David. It's so good to uh, hear hear from you again. Let's keep an open communication. Hey, did you like that video? Hit the subscribe button, hit that ring bell notification so that way you're informed when we upload more content to the Hardlens Media YouTube channel.